<clears throat> All right, so uh, good evening, my dear students. So in this particular session, I will be doing a very important topic that is neurocutaneous markers or basically I will be discussing that is neurocutaneous syndromes. In this particular neurocutaneous syndromes, you have the neurocutaneous markers. So what are those and all? Let me discuss about these particular neurocutaneous syndromes. Just give me a second. Okay. So starting with this, first of all, you should know what are your neurocutaneous markers. The neurocutaneous markers are the one, as I have already said you, they are the one which are present within the neurocutaneous syndromes. Now, what are your neurocutaneous syndromes? They are the one, they are basically the tumors. Where are these tumors present? Or the disorder of certain structures, like the disorder of the brain, the disorder of the spinal cord, the disorders of the skin and as well as the bones. So these are the neurocutaneous syndromes, right? These are the disorders that affect the brain, spinal cord, skin and as well as the bones. Now, what? whenever the individual develops this particular disease, this particular disease will persist lifelong, right? This particular disease will persist lifelong. Now, what will be the manifestations in this neurocutaneous syndromes? The manifestations in neurocutaneous syndromes include the hearing loss, the seizures or the developmental problems. These are the manifestations or multiple manifestations are there which I will be discussing. But these are some of the common thing like which I have marked here. Right? Now, so what are your neurocutaneous syndromes first? So if you take the list of neurocutaneous syndromes, these are the neurocutaneous syndromes. That includes a very important one that is neurofibromatosis. Then followed by that we have tuberous sclerosis. Then followed by that we have von Hippel Lindau disease, Sturge Weber syndrome, and ataxia telangiectasia. If you see the list of neurocutaneous syndromes, we have a very big list of neurocutaneous syndromes, but among them these are some of the common ones, right? Among them, these are some of the common ones. That is neurofibromatosis, tuberous sclerosis, von hippel lindau disease, Sturge Weber syndrome, and as well as the ataxia telangiectasia. Now, so in this particular session, right, the entire neurocutaneous syndromes, I have divided into three portions, right? I'll discuss this particular neurocutaneous syndromes under three sessions. 6 p.m. that is now for half an hour I will be discussing a part of neurocutaneous syndromes. 8 p.m. again I, have, I will discuss the other half part and the 10 p.m. I will discuss the remaining part of the neurocutaneous syndromes along with the multiple choice questions. So the entire neurocutaneous syndromes I will discuss in three parts today that is 6 p.m., 8 p.m. and as well as 10 p.m. So now what I will start ahead with first and foremost I will start with the neurofibromatosis, right? So we will discuss the theory part first and then we will discuss the clinical features, sorry, we will discuss the multiple choice questions after the discussion of this particular neurocutaneous syndrome. Now, so first and foremost, you see about the neurocutaneous syndrome that is your neurofibromatosis, right? That is your neurofibromatosis. So if you take this neurofibromatosis, this neurofibromatosis, it is mainly of two types. That is neurofibromatosis type 1 and neurofibromatosis type 2. Right? Type 1 and as well as type 2. Now, this particular type 1, this is also called <coughs> von Recklinghausen's syndrome. Right? This is also called von Recklinghausen's syndrome. That is the other name of your neurofibromatosis type 1. Then 
द अदर नेम ऑफ इट ऑफ यूर न्यूरोफाइब्रोमोटोसिस टाइप वन विच इज वॉन रेटिंग हॉजेंस दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड पेरीफरल न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस वाई इज इट कॉल्ड पेरीफरल न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस आई विल डिस्कस वेर एज यू टेक न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस टाइप टू दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सेंट्रल न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस वाई इज दिस कॉल्ड आई विल टीच यू राइट सो पेरीफरल न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस दैट इज टाइप वन न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस एंड सेंट्रल न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस इट इज टाइप टू न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस नाउ first and foremost very important multiple choice question which is the most common type of neurofibromatosis can anyone tell me which is the most common type of neurofibromatosis is it type 1 or type 2 anyone of you yes hemant maya swiggy boy very good yes swiggy boy you are correct so it is type 1 neurofibromatosis which is more common right and out of this what is a percentage distribution right percentage distribution 90% you will have type 1 neurofibromatosis whereas <coughs> it is only 10% what you will see is the type 2 neurofibromatosis okay so the most prevalent one is what type 1 neurofibromatosis is the most prevalent the next thing the next multiple choice question what they will be asking you is what is the chromosome involvement for type 1 and chromosome involvement in type 2 yes can anyone does anyone know what is the chromosome involvement in type 1 neurofibromatosis right so let me tell you okay so in case of type 1 neurofibromatosis the chromosomal involvement is on chromosome 17 yes raghav lakshmi you have answered it correctly very good so that is on chromosome 17 and what is the gene which is being defective here that is neurofibromatosis type 1 gene right neurofibromatosis type 1 gene right next now you take the you take type 2 neurofibromatosis very good maya the in case of type 2 neurofibromatosis the chromosomal abnormality is present on chromosome number 22 and the gene which is being defective is neurofibromatosis type 2 gene or nf2 gene now what is a basically these are familial disorders that means hereditary disorders so what type of inheritance is this is it your autosomal dominant inheritance or autosomal recessive inheritance any one of you please autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive now let me tell you that both of them they are inherited as autosomal dominant type of inheritance right very good yes avinash venkat um sagi all of you are correct so yes swiggy boy you are also done good maya correct aditya correct so the type of inheritance both of them they are being transmitted as autosomal dominant type of inheritance now what i will discuss is i will discuss first in detail about the neurofibromatosis type 1 i'll just go back what i am discussing now see we are discussing neurocutaneous syndromes right neurocutaneous syndromes include neurofibromatosis tuberous sclerosis von hippel lindau disease sturge weber syndrome and ataxia to lengectasia out of which i have taken neurofibromatosis to discuss now and in the neurofibromatosis i have said that we have two types of neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2 and i have given a basic introduction of type 1 and type 2 now i am going in detail discussion of type 1 neurofibromatosis right type 1 neurofibromatosis now so you take type 1 neurofibromatosis see there are multiple manifestations in the individual neurocutaneous syndromes what i will do is i'll try to give you a mnemonic hmm? i'll try to give you a mnemonic for each and every type of the neurocutaneous syndromes now for you, for example you take type 1 neurofibromatosis <clears throat> in case of type 1 neurofibromatosis everyone is aware of the presence of a characteristic spots and what are those characteristic spots those particular characteristic spots is your cafflite spots 
right these are the characteristic spots okay now what is a mnemonic then the mnemonic what you have is cave spot is the mnemonic so the manifestations in your type 1 neurofibromatosis is cave spot what is cave spot c already i have discussed that is cafu spots and you take the word a a stands for axillary and inguinal freckling right i'll show you all that particular images also right axillary and inguinal freckling then you take the word f f stands for presence of the fibromas right presence of the fibromas okay then you take the word e e stands for you have the manifestations within the eye and what are that manifestations within the eye that is the presence of your lish nodules all right then then you have what is called spot <clears throat> so if you take the word s s stands for skeletal manifestations what is that skeletal manifestations that is bowing of the leg again i will discuss in detail about the individual manifestation then you take the word p so if you see this word p <coughs> p stands for positive family history right p stands for positive family history all right then you take the word o and t what does this o and t stands for this o and t stands for optic tumor and what is that optic tumor that particular optic tumor is nothing but your glioma right glioma okay yes venkat the cafu spots they are present in multiple conditions <clears throat> they are not just confined to your type 1 neurofibromatosis and you have differential diagnosis for your cafu spots okay right as you have said macquen albright syndrome all those they are completely a correct uh, clinical scenarios what you have said hmm, very good now now let me show you the images of all this hmm? let me show you the images of all this because they may ask you image based questions on these particular uh, different clinical manifestations of your type 1 neurofibromatosis now so if you see this yeah now these are your cafu spots right and what are these cafu spots you see this these are your cafu spots okay so which are nothing but the pigmented birth marks and they are completely flat right pigmented birth ma birth marks and they are completely flat now according to the diagnostic criteria right according to the diagnostic criteria how many cafu spots should be present can anyone tell me according to the diagnostic criteria of your type 1 neurofibromatosis how many cafu spots should be present right so any one of you <clears throat> right so according to the diagnostic criteria right so there should be very good swiggy boy excellent right so there should be more than six cafu spots should be present and each cafu spot that should be 5 mm in diameter right it should be 5 mm in diameter right and the other important point is this particular 5 mm in diameter it should be in the pre pubertal individuals right it should be in the pre pubertal individuals whereas it should be of 15 mm in diameter right 15 mm in diameter in post pubertal individuals so this will be asked as a multiple choice question remember minimum number of cafu spots should be more than 6 right and each should be 5 mm in pre pubertal and more than 15 mm in post pubertal that is about your cafu spots then what did i tell you about the word a the word a i have discussed about what is called axillary freckling now what is this axillary freckling that is increase in the number of your freckles within the axilla right you can see here increase in the number of freckles within the axilla and along with that 
there should be presence of small circular spots you can see here within the axilla you can see the presence of small circular spots this is nothing but your axillary freckling right then you take the word f what did i talk about the word f the word f i have talked about what is called fibromas you see these are all your fibromas right and basically what fibroma there it is a neurofibroma now the question is what is neurofibroma neurofibroma it is a benign nerve sheath tumor right it is a benign nerve sheath tumor in the peripheral nervous system and that is the reason why your type 1 neurofibromatosis this is called peripheral neurofibromatosis right that is the reason why this is called peripheral neurofibromatosis okay now now can anyone tell me according to the diagnostic criteria right according to the diagnostic criteria how many neurofibromatosis or how many neurofibromas should be there any one of you how many neurofibromas should be there according to the diagnostic criteria yes swiggy boy do you want to make an attempt yes according to the diagnostic criteria remember the number of neurofibromas the number of neurofibromas it should be more than or equal to 2 right yes priyanka trivedi freckling freckling is nothing but the folds within the axilla right folds within the axilla <clears throat> right so two or more neurofibromas or one plexiform neurofibroma should be there right plexiform neurofibroma should be there okay so this is about your neurofibroma so calf spot we have discussed calf flu spots then axillary freckling then we have discussed about the fibromas then you take the word e e is what eye manifestations and what is that eye manifestations that is nothing but the presence of your lish nodules now what are lish nodules lish nodules are melanocytic hamartomas right melanocytic hamartomas okay and where are they present they are the one mainly projecting from the surface of the iris right they are the mainly projecting from surface of the iris now according to the diagnostic criteria how many lish nodules should be present right according to the diagnostic criteria how many lish nodules should be present any one of you right according to the diagnostic criteria the minimum number of lish nodules should be more than or equal to 5 minimum number of lish nodules should be more than or equal to 5 okay right very good said ali next so we have discussed caf c a f e we have discussed right c a f e we have discussed now what is left out with spot now let me discuss what is that particular spot s yes, what did i tell you Yes, I have said you for the skeletal manifestations. Now, what is that particular skeletal manifestations that will be seen? You see here, whatever I have just put in the form of an arrow. This is your sphenoid bone, right? This is your sphenoid bone. Skeletal manifestations will be that is sphenoid dysplasia, or there will be cortical thinning of the bone. right cortical thinning of the bone with or without pseudo arthrosis that is your sphenoid dysplasia that is skeletal manifestation so then coming to your word p what is that p p i have said you the positive <coughs> sorry p i have said you that is pedigree or positive family history right then then you take the word ot spot ot what is ot ot is nothing but your optic glioma right you can see now this is your eye this is one eye and this is the other eye here you can make out the optic glioma this is your optic glioma right so can anyone tell me what is the type of pupil in optic glioma what is the type of pupil in optic glioma optic now glioma what is the type of pupil <clears throat> any one of you please
remember the type of pupil what you will have in case of optic nerve glioma is your marcus gun pupil right it is called marcus gun pupil is your marcus gun pupil right next now what is this marcus gun pupil in case of this marcus gun pupil remember the direct light reflex will be absent whereas indirect light reflex will be present in the affected eye right direct light reflex will be absent and indirect light reflex will be present that is what is your marcus gun pupil all right then the other skeletal manifestation what you will have in these individuals is your scoliosis <clears throat> scoliosis is another skeletal manifestation which is present in your type 1 neurofibromatosis but this is not included in the diagnostic criteria right but this is not included in your diagnostic criteria all right so these are the manifestations what you will come across in patients with your type 1 neurofibromatosis now but among all if anyone asks you the question which is the commonest tumor in type 1 neurofibromatosis the answer should be optic nerve glioma right the commonest tumor right the commonest tumor in type 1 neurofibromatosis is your optic nerve glioma right and this is present nearly around 15 to 20 percentage of individuals right 15 to 20 percentage of individuals with type 1 neurofibromatosis okay so yes so this is about your the type 1 neurofibromatosis i'll just roughly revise the type 1 neurofibromatosis now so this should be the diagno diagnostic criteria presence of the few spots right 5 millimeters pre prepubertal 15 millimeters post pubertal <coughs> axillary axillary freckling two or more iris lish nodules, two or more neurofibromas, presence of skeletal manifestations that is sphenoid dysplasia, right, and optic glioma and positive family history. There are totally seven criteria. Out of these seven criteria, minimum more than or equal to two should be there, right, more than or equal to two should be there in case of diagnostic criteria of type 1 neurofibromatosis scoliosis is very common manifestation but that is not included in your diagnostic criteria right but that is not included in the diagnostic criteria then <clears throat> now after having discussed about type 1 neurofibromatosis then we will move on to type 2 neurofibromatosis right we'll move on to type 2 neurofibromatosis now what is the mnemonic for type 2 neurofibromatosis the mnemonic for your type 2 neurofibromatosis is miss you, right? So, I miss you very badly. That is your mnemonic for type 2 neurofibromatosis, right? What is that? M stands for multiple manifestations are there. And what are those multiple manifestations? Let me discuss. The word I stands for inherited condition, right? What type of inheritance we have discussed? Autosomal dominant type of inheritance, and you take the word S. S stands for schwannoma. And I have to discuss in detail about the schwannoma. Right? So let me discuss in detail about the schwannoma in these individuals. <clears throat> so, if you take this, 8th nerve involvement is very common in type 2 neurofibromatosis. And what is that 8th nerve involvement? That will be bilateral 8th nerve involvement. And that is in the form of acoustic neuroma right that is in the form of acoustic neuroma and how is this acoustic neuroma demonstrated this acoustic neuroma it is demonstrated either by CT scan or MRI right CT scan or MRI so that is your schwannoma <clears throat> that is your S hmm? that is your schwannoma then you take the word miss U U stands for what See, most of it, it should be bilateral 8th nerve involvement. If suppose, if the individual is having unilateral 8th nerve involvement, along with the unilateral 8th nerve involvement, there should be additional manifestations. 
Now, what are those additional manifestations? Let me tell you. <clears throat> so, if it is unilateral manifestations, unilateral eighth nerve involvement, along with, right, along with neurofibroma, right, along with neurofibroma, then meningioma, then optic nerve glioma, some of you are asking in type 2 neurofibromatosis, optic glioma is there or not? Uh, yes, patel path. <clears throat> the answer for you is yes. Even in case of type 2 neurofibromatosis, you will have the optic nerve glioma. Right? Then. So, unilateral eighth nerve involvement along with neurofibroma, meningioma, glioma, then schwannoma, and as well as posterior subcapsular right posterior subcapsular opacity okay so these are the manifestations in type 2 neurofibromatosis what is that i'll repeat again so it is your miss you m stands for multiple manifestations i stands for inherited that means what either a parent or a sibling or child will be there associated with type 2 neurofibromatosis and you take the word S that is schwannomas originating from 8th nerve. Remember the presence of bilateral acoustic neuroma, the presence of bilateral acoustic neuroma, it is the most distinctive feature of type 2 neurofibromatosis. For suppose if bilateral is not there, we will take unilateral we will take unilateral. Along with the unilateral eighth nerve involvement, either there should be neurofibroma or meningioma or glioma, schwannoma or juvenile posterior subcapsular cataract. Next, in type 2 neurofibromatosis, you have it is type 2. So, you have what is called rule of 2 for type 2 neurofibromatosis. Then let, now, let me tell you what is that rule of 2. Rule of twos for type 2 neurofibromatosis. First rule that is, it is neurofibromatosis type 2. This is the first. Then, what is the chromosome we have discussed? The chromosome, what we have discussed is chromosome 22. That is also 2 again. Then, third 2 is what? Bilateral vestibular schwannoma. <clears throat> this is the characteristic manifestations in type 2 neurofibromatosis, schwannoma. Okay, this is again 2, right? Then you take the fourth 2. It is present in second to fourth decade, mainly around the age group of 20 years. Mainly around the age group of 20 years. So, this is what is called as rule of 2 in case of type 2 neurofibromatosis. So, my dear students, what I have discussed until now, right? So, I have discussed the neurocutaneous syndromes. Out of this neurocutaneous syndromes, I have discussed one that is neurofibromatosis, right? Then we have tuberous sclerosis, one hip lindo, Stodge Weber syndrome, and ataxia telangiectasia. So, before going into them, let me discuss some of the multiple choice questions. <clears throat> yes, answer this question. All are the criteria of type 1 neurofibromatosis except acoustic neuroma, caflu macules, pseudoarthrosis, scoliosis. Which among the following is not the criteria of type 1? Any one of you? Abhinash, how can you say scoliosis? I have shown you the image of scoliosis. That is a part of your type 1 neurofibromatosis. So the answer here is acoustic neuroma. I said you, bilateral acoustic neuroma is a characteristic feature of type 2 neurofibromatosis, not type 1 neurofibromatosis. Alright? So the answer here is A, acoustic neuroma. Okay? 
Well, we will see next question. One more question. Yes. Schwannoma of spinal nerve roots is seen in <clears throat> neurofibromatosis type 1, neurofibromatosis type 2, Tarcot syndrome, leaf Romani syndrome. Yes, Avinash, uh, a very good question, right? You, sir, you said scoliosis is not the part of the diagnostic criteria. But you see what is the question asked? All are the criteria for type 1 neurofibromatosis except. That means what? It tells you that which among the following is not the feature of type 1. Acoustic neuroma, definitely it is not there. Even scoliosis, okay, I consider your point plus or minus. But acoustic neuroma, will it be there in type 1? It will not at all be there in type 1. So you go for the best answer there. But whatever you have asked, your doubt is a definitely a very good doubt. But in acoustic neuroma, he is not at all the feature of type 1. It is a feature of type 2. So that is the reason why you go with answer A rather than answer D. Okay? Then. <clears throat> yes. So schwannoma of spinal nerve is seen in. Yes, uh, what have you answered most of you? Schwannoma of spinal nerve root is seen in. Some of you have answered it as Tarcot, some of you have answered it as type 1. Some of you have answered it as type 2. <clears throat> you take spinal nerve, yes. Venkat, tell me, spinal nerve, is it is a part of the central nervous system or is it a part of the peripheral nervous system? Spinal nerve, is it a part of the central nervous system or a part of the peripheral nervous system? It is the part of your peripheral nervous system. So, then what will be the answer? The answer will be type 1 neurofibromatosis. The answer will be type 1 neurofibromatosis, not your type 2 neurofibromatosis. Spinal nerve is peripheral nerve. And in type 1 neurofibromatosis, you will have peripheral angiofibromas. Right? Peripheral fibromatosis. Central fibromatosis is type 2. And your spinal nerve is not central nerve. Right? So, most of you have selected for type 2. Type 2 is not the correct answer. Type 1 is the correct answer. Alright? Next. Now, we will move on. To, we will see this last question for this particular uh, six o'clock session. List nodules are seen in which of the following conditions? List nodules are seen in which of the following conditions? <clears throat> yes, list nodules. Very good. So, leash nodules, they are the features of your type 1 neurofibromatosis and your type 1 neurofibromatosis is nothing but your von reckling Horsens disease. Hmm? Von reckling Horsens disease. Okay. What is this Louis Barr syndrome? Anyone, can anyone of you tell me what is this Louis Barr syndrome? Hmm? What is this Louis Barr syndrome? Louis Barr syndrome, it is your ataxia telangiectasia. Right? Ataxia telangiectasia is your Louis Barr syndrome. Okay? So, ataxia telangiectasia, tuberous sclerosis, von hippel lindau syndrome, all that we will be discussing in the further part of your neurofibromatosis. Sorry, uh, further part of your neurocutaneous syndromes. So, yes guys, now I have just discussed only neurofibromatosis type 1 and type 2 so this is for this particular session at 6 o'clock and again i will see you at 8 o'clock i will discuss some more neurocutaneous syndromes and we will discuss some of the multiple choice questions as well but remember these two mnemonics remember these two mnemonics for type 1 the mnemonic is cave spot Keflu spot, axillary freckling, fibroma, lish nodules in the eye, skeletal manifestation, positive family history and optic nerve glioma. And for type 2, you remember this particular mnemonic that is miss you. Multiple manifestation, inherited condition, schwannoma, yeah, that is bilateral schwannoma. And if it is 
eighth nerve involvement unilateral along with that there should be presence of the meningioma and fibroma all those conditions so with this i will just end this particular session and again see you at 8 pm so i hope you people have uh, understood this particular session right just give me some of the feedbacks so that i will improve myself to reach your level at 8 pm session <clears throat> and some of you are asking the questions also i will take up your doubts at 8 pm session when i start back so meanwhile any doubts if you have you please post the doubts i'll definitely take up those particular questions so now i'll just turn off my session now and see you back again at 8 pm <clears throat>